Hi YouTube, I'm Maimon, and welcome back to one of my auto repair videos. This is part 2 of how to remove and replace the coolant flow control valve in the 2004-2009 to Toyota Prius. So, I recommend that if you haven't watched part 1 already, you should watch part 1, because if you don't, a lot of this won't make sense. So, towards the end of that video, you might recall that uh, we broke a bolt down here, actually. So, that is where it is. So it got cleanly uh, broken off. So we have to, we had to drill. Actually, we had to drill a new hole in the car, as well as a new hole on the uh, on the base. I, I mean, on the unit, on the uh, part. All right. So this is what the old piece looks like. Uh, notice only one hole. So it's supposed to go in this uh, onto this nut, but since that's uh, cut clean off, we made another hole right there. And this is the new part that we have. This is the original hole. Uh, this is what the original hole looks like. You can also notice that there's no notch cut out. On this one, we made a new hole so that it can go into this hole. We also cut out a notch so that the bolt could fit. Whew, that was a lot of work. In the previous video, we mentioned that there were three methods of uh, accessing the coolant control valve. And the first one was the, uh, removing the headlights. And that's exactly what we did here. But another step that we took was removing the inverter coolant uh, pump, which goes from all the way from the back and it loops all, it goes through the system uh, uh, at the bottom of the radiator uh, all the way here. So we're gonna do a separate video on how to remove and install the, uh, uh, the inverter coolant pump. I mean, we didn't intend to, but we might as well. So feel free to check that out as well. All right, so as always, Installation is the reverse of removal. So right now we're going to put the bottom hose on and I just want you to note that we put the we clamped the um, Inverter coolant pump hoses just so that uh, we don't have to bleed it after So we're gonna set that aside for now and we probably won't be able to show you But we're gonna hook the hose up from the bottom to this bottom uh, Output not these two this one. All right. Let's see I need a light. It makes it easier if you put the uh, the pump, no, you put the valve in from below and then you hook the hose up on the bottom because if you put it from the, I'm not sure you get it. Let me get the light so you can. So if you do it from the bottom, you can just navigate it upwards and it'll be easier for you to do. All right, so in summary, we basically just found out that it's easier to hook up the hose from the bottom Instead of having to do it, uh, having to navigate the hose all the way up. So now that it's hanging here, we're just going to try to navigate it, navigate the whole unit upwards. And then when, once we get it into a single place, we're going to, we're going to start from, we're going to start to, uh, go to the top and then work, work our way from there. All right. So I think. I'm, a, I'm in a good place where I can go up. Let me see. All right. So I have to make sure that this, the, these two, are facing the other way. All right. So now that these two are up, we're going to position them. Move this. Move this hose out of the way. Oh geez. So we're gonna move this hose out of the way. And then we're gonna try to twist this around. A lot of finagling here, okay guys? Very tricky. And then, see? We're gonna finally try to sort of position it correctly. Alright, so at, at this point you could probably put the bolts in. Or you could uh, put the hoses on. So, I think we'll probably put the bolts on first. Alright, so as you can see, uh, we're back in another day, but we finally fixed the uh, broken bolt problem with another new either bolt or rivet, I think. And finally, it's tight. Now, it should wiggle just a bit because it's a valve, but anyway, next, it's time to hook back the hoses. Now, we remembered that the bottom one, uh, I mean, the bottom hose is the one with the glove in it, so we're going to set this glove aside. And it probably would be, be easier to put the hoses on, then put the bolts on. 
but uh, we just put the bolt on first because it was broken. Actually, actually, never mind. So we're gonna just put this on. Uh, also use some Rue Glide if you have it, some rubber lubricant to help you ease it in. All right, so just slowly. Uh, before you put it on, make sure the clamp is far back so it's easier to put it on. Uh, I'm gonna put the second one on. Actually, this would probably, it'd probably be easier to put the clamp, to tighten the clamp first and then put the second one on so that it's not blocked. So let me get the pliers. All right, so it's gonna be a bit hard to get it in its natural position, but just in case there are any more future leaks, we're gonna leave it in sort of this position because remember the uh, previous position was the clamp was directly under this hose. So just in case there are any leaks, we're gonna keep it in this position so it's easier to get out. So we're gonna use the small pliers and sorry uh, for, I forgot to position the light last time, but now let's just squeeze this and gently finagle it on. And now it's at the place where it should be. It's not locking into its original position, and that's okay. Alright, so the top is the same thing. We're just going to finagle it out from here. And I don't think we have to worry about the position because this one's facing upwards. So just finagle it on. This one already has some lubricant on. There we go. So now we're going to use our pliers to put it on. It's going to be a bit tricky with this light. Okay. I'm gonna do this so that you guys can see it. Okay. Now, now I'm here. Let me just move this light around. Okay. So now, smooth, squeeze this. and move it upward. It's a bit tricky from this point on because you have to get your hands angled in the right place. Bear with me, bear with me for a second here. Oh, wait. Okay, I, I, I thought it was off the hose because there was some blank space, but that's supposed to be there. Okay, now the final, just the final stretch, and... Hmm. Okay, so let's try this long pliers. Sort of slowly finagle it on. You can see that I am... Where is its original position? I think that's its original position because it doesn't have any imprints I can see. Okay. Alright, so now we're in the home stretch. All we have to do is put back all the cables and fasteners. So first off, this one down here. We just snap it back in. Uh, then this cable goes to this uh, harness or housing. You hear that snap, that click, that means it's in place. And finally this one. Now, okay, so let me just make sure it's facing the right orientation. So this one goes in the back, I mean towards the front. So you see it should, it should be intuitive. Okay, so it also has a ridge here, so that prevents you from putting it in the wrong side. So this tiny ridge right here is aligned right here. It's a bit hard to see because I'm wearing gloves, but... Don't want to put too much force on it. Okay, so I hear a click. That means it's in. Let's do a final test. Just try to pull it out. No, it's not coming out. This one. It's not coming out either. Now at this point, all you have to do is put back everything that you have uh, taken out in order to reach it. So like the hoses, for example. Put them back in their harnesses. Connect them back to their original place. Alright, so the next step is to put back these hoses. So first off, this one. And just gotta sort of finagle it out from where we tucked it in. And it goes in this uh, black band, but I'm sure that we should put the, we should probably put the
the hose in first so that we have a bit more finagling room. Okay. Okay, so now that's... Uh, my glove got stuck. All right, so now that's here, you can just try to put it in. <laughs> so now that's here, you can try to put it in. Slowly finagle it on. All right, so you want to make sure that the hose is all the way until you can't push it in anymore. So the black should touch the wall. Now we're going to take our pliers. And this is going to be a bit hard for you guys to see. We're going to put the clamp back on. And let me just see where the original position was first. Well, I just got the pliers stuck. That's the first. Okay. So next step, we're going to see where its original position is. And... Okay. So, okay. So now we're going to put it back on. Let me just angle this correctly. Ah, I got the fire stuck again. This one's a bit hard because the actual pliers can get stuck in the big, bigger hole. All right. So we got uh, bigger, uh, bigger pliers. These ones shouldn't get stuck in the hole. Alright, so I'm going to try to angle it so you guys can see it better. Now we're going to rotate it to its correct position. Okay, slowly but surely. And, okay. I think that's the correct position. So its correct position is all the way here, I think, actually. So, okay. Okay, so now we're going to move it. So it looks like an A shape there, so I have to keep mind of that. Now we're going to just finagle it on. It's going to be a bit tricky, but slowly but surely. It also doesn't help because this is an aftermarket radiator, so the hose fitting is a bit bigger. You know, where the, the place where the hose goes onto is a bit bigger, so it's a bit hard to get the clamp on. But, eventually. Alright, so we finally got it on, uh, with the help of a bit of Ruglai, because like I said, the opening's a bit too big. Uh, this next step is just insert the hose into its, uh, its fitting, right here. And after that, just do any other steps that you need to reverse in order to put everything back together. So like the bracket, for example, you might need to put it back together. And that should be it. So for us, our next step is to be uh, reinstalling the inverter pump. Uh, we're also going to be doing a separate video on that, so go check that out as well. And finally, this is the most important one, which is we're going to uh, ref bleed and refill the uh, coolant. And that's very important for this car because if you're if there's air bubbles in your car, you're gonna need to bleed a lot, which is exactly what my dad did. Here he ble he bled this car like ten times. So go check that video out as well. And I'm Iman. Thanks for watching. Please like, or comment, subscribe. Look at our videos on I and Iman, especially the auto repair videos and the Toyota Prius video, uh, Toyota Prius videos. Um, I guess that's it. Signing out. Peace.